Hello everybody, I'm Zach Keesing and today I'm joined by Arch. Thank you for being here, sir. Hello, thank you for having me. No problem. So let's get right into it. What got you into making YouTube videos in the first place? <laughs> Well, uh, the uh, the sad fact is I started getting into it uh, when uh, Total War Warhammer 1 was uh, leaked, and I figured I wanted to get in on that. I wanted to cover it, because I've always wanted a Total War Warhammer. Less enthusiastic about it now, like half a decade later, but that was the reason. Very nice. All right, so what got you into Warhammer, then? <laughs> Uh, that was my grandmother uh, buying a Chaos Dwarf army book, not having the faintest clue what it was, and then gifting it to me on a birthday, I think, because she thought it looked cool, and I agreed, it did look cool. And ever since, I've been playing and reading 40k and Warhammer. That's very cool, very cool. So what has it been like to work on long-running lore series for your YouTube channel? It's been a lot of fun. Stressful on occasion. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be uh, done, but it is a very uh, good form of employment, so I really can't complain. So, what's been your favorite series to work on up to this point? Favorite series? I suppose I'm going to have to be um, uh, disappointing and point out the obvious one. Uh, Vrax was probably my favorite one, just because of the the size of it, and because that was the first one where I really got to work with a lot of different artists to create a lot of uh, custom artwork, which was a lot of fun. Very nice. Okay, so how is, that, how is that process hiring artists to bring the story to life for you? Well, first you need to find the little bastards. They are tricksy. But uh, once you manage to get a decent little group of them together, you can usually just shoot out emails to have them do whatever you want them to do. Then organizing them and making sure they actually deliver what they're supposed to is another interesting thing. But honestly, I've been very, very lucky with uh, most of the artists I've gotten a hold of, as they've all turned out to be really, really good people who are also very interested in making good art. And they've been a uh, joy to work with, by and large. Very good. It's very good to hear especially for any kind of production value it always it's important to get people to do their job and actually work with you you, you. all right yeah, so we're gonna get into some pretty spicy uh, content here so what was it like to have your channel hacked and to get the process to get it recovered <laughs> it was very YouTube that's for damn sure <laughs> uh, see this is uh, this is one of the things there is no um, there's no contact mechanism for YouTube uh, whatsoever unless you have access to a Google account. And of course, if your Google account is hacked, you are left without any way to actually get in contact with YouTube. Um, I eventually managed to get a hold of them via Twitter, which is not how you would think the world's largest tech company's uh, support would function, but there we are. <laughs> and it took, um, what, two, three weeks to finally get it back again through a very obtuse process where I never had any idea what they were doing. I just simply had to sit there twiddle my thumbs and hope and pray somebody was working on something somewhere. And it did work out eventually, so I guess I can't complain too much. Well, I remember when it happened, because I went on the KPO okay, watching your thing in the middle of your series, your Vrax series, and I was like, wait, hold on, why is this cha your channel down? And... I was so confused for a little bit, and then I thought, did he get hacked? And then you made your announcement video that you actually got hacked and all of that. So, what's it like to open up a Rumble pa page versus YouTube for your ch all your content? Well, uh, Rumble is an interesting platform in that it is the first one that has had any kind of... How do I put it? real success in comparison to YouTube. Um, the uh, the Trumphalophagus jumping on there was massive for them. They've also received quite a lot of good publication by people who wanted to join, and it is also pretty much the only one with monetization out of all of the competitors, which makes it again, very unique, and in a unique position to actually try to compete with YouTube. 
It is also making a lot of the same mistakes as YouTube was. Their back end is still awful. I've uh, set up a little mirror rumble for my second channel, The Archcast. It is a pain to go through. But they have automated the option to basically just copy over your channel details, which makes everything a lot easier again. I don't know what the future holds for Rumble. It's uh, very difficult to tell at this early point, but I do hope it grows larger and that it becomes an actual genuine alternative at some point. Hmm, that'd be very interesting. I know I haven't looked a ton into Rumble, but I just know uh, you brought you when you mentioned it on your, your channel video about when you got hacked, and so that was when I first met you about Rumble. I'm like, I don't even know what Rumble is, so I was like, well, go check it out. And that's how I kept watching your content until you got your YouTube channel back up. So here's another spicy question for you. What has it been like to deal with the different controversies surrounding you recently in recent months and history, I guess? Honestly, I paid very little mind because they tend to be pretty weak controversies. <laughs> yeah, I would have to agree on that. So, alrighty, uh, so uh, how long do you plan on making YouTube and video content in general for your channel? God knows. I I have no idea. Like, this is really not something I've thought about. I am just making more videos now, because I enjoy it. I am planning to move over to more historical content uh, once I've got all that done. But I'm trying to put a lot of time and effort into that to make sure the production value is uh, adequately high. And I'm enjoying making just commentary videos on the second channel, so I imagine I'll keep doing it so long as I enjoy doing it. Fair enough, that makes sense to me. So do you have any plan plans for any other ty types of videos or production value in the future? Well, with the Games Workshop uh, being the way they are right now, I am scaling down everything that has to do with Warhammer 40k. I am not giving them any more custom artwork, so the era of the large lore series has probably come to an end until GW comes to their senses. So I'll be moving all of that money and production value over onto historical videos and other settings. I've got um, a series of animated backgrounds in the works for the Second World War, for example, which I think will look really good when they finish up. Wow, well, I can, well if any quality of I've in your previous productions, I would say it's probably going to be amazing and probably going to look really great. And I look forward to seeing that production coming out. Thank you. Um, I hope so. Well, I hope so too, because I like your content. Alrighty, so that we, we blitz through all the all the questions. I want to just thank you very much for joining me today. Everybody, please go subscribe and support Arch. He's a great YouTuber. He makes great content, and I can highly recommend it to anybody. Once again, to either Warhammer or or other content. Thank you very much for being here, sir. No problem. Thank you very much for having me again. All right.